every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? At the Team Automotive Group, we're offering you the team guarantee on new and used vehicles. Included with every new vehicle is a lifetime limited powertrain warranty. And now, get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Get the team guarantee at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Welcome as we start today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here's hoping all is well with you and yours and your little slice of South Louisiana heaven. Since the last opportunity, we had to spend a little time with you and yours at home or at work, wherever you happen to be. Mobile device, etc., etc., etc. We start today's show with Louisiana news, as we typically do. And this one is a good news, bad news scenario. Governor John Bell Edwards announcing this week that the state of Louisiana is in line for an additional $100 million in federal transportation money. It is money that was awarded to our state after other states were given X amount of dollars for their infrastructure needs and didn't use that money. Federal government said, okay, we've got this money other folks didn't use, so Louisiana, we're going to give you an additional $100 million. Governor John Bell Edwards saying, quote, this funding is another big step in our work to improve Louisiana infrastructure. Well, the good news is, relatively speaking, that's an additional $100 million. The bad news is that we are anywhere from 12 to 14 billion dollars in the hole when it comes to basic road repair, bridge repair, and construction needs. Now, far be it from me to poo poo 100 million dollars. And you guys and girls already know this. Governor John Bell Edwards liberal by my standards. I, on the other hand, conservative. So it only stands to reason, and there's nothing wrong with this, y'all. Please, don't get it twisted. It only stands to reason that there are going to be a lot of things we don't agree upon. And I don't know if I would categorize this as a big step, considering $100 million on one hand versus 12 to $14 billion in needs on the other hand but my late father god bless him with all his wisdom taught his children early in life sometimes you don't look a gift horse in the mouth and hopefully this additional 100 million dollars uh, will be spent wisely and efficiently no word yet and and understanding how early this is in the process no word just yet on where this $100 million will go to help our infrastructure needs in Louisiana. I only hope that uh, it will be used wisely and efficiently. <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying. Clarence, what is wrong with you? 
You're saying wise and efficient in the same sentence with government and a hundred million dollars. I get it, but hey, you can't blame an old guy for wishful thinking, right? That was the good news, bad news story. In New Orleans, there is a bad news story. A couple of media outlets there are reporting that this week, Jeff Asher, a crime analyst, is scheduled to present to the city council there this week a report that has some troubling information regarding law enforcement and the prosecution of criminals. According to this report, nearly 100 rapes and thousands of other crimes because of, in large part, a manpower shortage of the NOPD, these crimes, almost as soon as the call is received, have been reclassified from an emergency to a non-emergency. According to this report, all of this happens at a time where the NOPD, which used to have around 1,300 officers, is now down to 950. So far this year, 40% according to this report, of the aggravated rapes in New Orleans have been reclassified from an emergency to a non-emergency. The same thing has happened with 1,486 domestic disturbances, 43 domestic batteries, 252 aggravated assaults, and 74 armed robberies, or carjackings. I understand there will be times where dispatch gets a call regarding a rape, and you wouldn't look at it as being, quote, an emergency, meaning just recently there was a report, individual called and let police know I was sexually assaulted 10 years ago. At that point, you have no idea where the perpetrator is. There is no imminent threat. So you would reclassify that as a non-emergency. I also understand that with the 350 officer shortfall of the NOPD, you've got to be judicious as far as where lights and sirens are deemed necessary. Meaning, if there's a armed robbery just called in, you know this person is armed with a firearm, you know this person has ill intent, so in that particular instance, lights, sirens would be warranted. However, when all is said and done, the danger here in many cases is that many individuals, as is pointed out in this report, are not going to sit around traumatized for three to four hours before law enforcement shows up to take a report. Once that call comes in and then is reclassified as a non-emergency, it could be four hours before an officer shows up at your door to take a report about a rape. Now, being a guy, I will not pretend in any way, shape, or form to understand what the mental condition of a woman who's just been raped happens to be. God bless her. I, I'm not going to for one second say, well, yeah, I know what that's like. I couldn't tell you. But I've got to imagine the longer a woman sits around waiting hours on end in a traumatized state of mind, it's not going to take a whole lot before she says, you know what? I don't need this. I could be tending to my mental health. I could be tending to any number of other things. 
but I certainly don't have four hours, three hours, two hours for that matter, to sit around waiting for law enforcement to respond. At the end of the day, an individual that's just been carjacked deserves to get immediate attention. An individual that just had some, and I got to be careful because it's broadcast TV, some miscreant show up, stick a handgun in your face and rob you of all your possessions. You deserve to have that investigated immediately. It is very telling about what many governments have fallen to. There was a time where there was a very clear understanding of what provide for the general welfare meant. Nowadays, it is something completely different. If we cannot, for whatever reason, give the citizenry adequate law enforcement protection, if we cannot, for whatever reason, have rapid response to the needs of the citizenry, then we might need to start looking at some other folks to help us out in that regard. It is a city that has struggled with crime for many years. And unfortunately, it is the most vulnerable that end up being victimized by these folks. When all is said and done, y'all, we deserve better than this. And with Mayor Cantrell facing a recall and the explosion in crime being a big part of this, maybe this will see some more immediacy in being addressed. For a city that thrives on tourism dollars, the hospitality industry, et cetera, et cetera, and the economy of our state at large, it's something that we need to get a handle on, and the sooner, the better. Of course, now, when all is said and done, crime ends up affecting all of us in more than one way. And the city of New Orleans and tourism are synonymous. They go hand in hand. And at the end of the day, one could very easily undermine the other. Just saying. Let me get this first break of today's show out of the way. When we come back, we'll talk a little more Louisiana news and the so-called quote-unquote fight to stop juvenile inmates from being transferred to Angola. We'll talk about that when we continue today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. 
I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. The Mazda CX-50, confident on and off-road performance and intelligently designed utility inside and out. The all-new Mazda CX-50 has arrived and is on sale right now at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. As we continue with Louisiana news, you probably saw, if you've been, you know, keeping abreast of these things, this week, more than a dozen people turning out on the steps of the state capitol here in Baton Rouge to protest plans to send juvenile offenders from the much-troubled Bridge City facility to Angola. You, I'm sure, are well aware by now of the dozens of escape attempts that occurred at that facility, Um, how one unfortunate citizen doing nothing more than minding his own business ended up being shot by one of these escapees. Well, a group of folks turned out to protest this week on the steps of the Capitol. One of them was Gina Womack, the co-founder of Families and Friends of Louisiana's Incarcerated Children, saying, quote, it cannot be done safely or legally. It will do nothing to address the ongoing serious problems in the Office of Juvenile Justice facilities. I found it interesting and somewhat telling that another individual that spoke at this protest was the mother of a son who was incarcerated there. And she said, and I quote, sending these kids to the state prison at Angola is punishing the kids for the state's failures. I guess theoretically, you could make the argument that this is the state's failings being brought to light. But I'll be brutally honest with you guys and girls. My gut reaction is that this is not punishing children for the state's failures. It's your failures. These are your children that after engaging in criminal activity, being confined to a juvenile facility, then sees fit to break out, in some instances, violently and escape. This is not a failure of the state. It's a failure of parents. 
Let's simply put the blame where it lies. And at the end of the day, let's say for the sake of the conversation, the Office of Juvenile Justice implements a plan to be sure that no child ever escapes again. We are still left dealing with the problem of juveniles getting younger and younger and younger, committing more and more and more violent and heinous crimes. If by chance the Office of Juvenile Justice were able starting today to lock down every juvenile facility and there's never another escape, is this not the protest putting the cart in front of the horse? We're still dealing with, right here in Baton Rouge, this week, two 13-year-olds and a 14-year-old arrested for running a burglary ring where 17 stolen guns were found. We're still left dealing with a 16-year-old the week before arrested for selling crack in the parking lot of a gas station and when his home was searched, another 17 stolen guns were found. At the end of the day, y'all, and you've heard this before, it is so much easier and cost efficient to deal with a child or an adult before incarceration than it is Afterwards, and unless and until we adopt the mindset in this state and this nation as well, that this is how we're going to attack the problem, it will only get worse. And, you know, this, this brings to mind the age-old argument that liberals will throw at you at every given opportunity. Well, the problem is oh, we don't have enough opportunities in jail for people to improve their lot in life. I'm going to tell you what many of my conservative friends will not. When we hear, well, there's not enough opportunities in jail for these individuals to improve their lot in life. Well, first of all, the federal government, the state government, in many cases local governments, have stuck their grubby little fingers in my pocket to build a public school system. But you won't go. We got the highest dropout rates there are. Well, but you got to understand, Clarence, they would go to the school that the taxpayers are paying for, but their parents are poor, so they don't have a ride to school or a ride home. Okay, not a problem. We're going to reach our grubby little fingers even deeper in your pocket, and we're going to pay for a school bus and a driver to pick you up every day and drive you to the school that we took money out of your pocket to build, and pay the teachers, and buy the books, and the supplies. Well, yeah, I would get on that bus and go to the school that the taxpayers are paying for and ride the taxpayer-funded school bus. But you know, I told you, my family's poor. I can't afford breakfast or lunch, and I can't learn if I'm sitting there and my stomach's growling all day. Okay, not a problem. We took some money. Out of your pocket, taxpayers, to build a school, staff it with teachers and books. We stuck our, our fingers even deeper in the pocket and paid for a school bus and a bus driver to take you to and from. Not a problem. We'll stick our fingers even deeper in the pockets of taxpaying Americans and we'll give you a free or reduced price lunch, breakfast, and in some cases, a snack. Yeah, well, you, you got to understand, I would get on the taxpayer-funded bus and go to the taxpayer-funded school and be taught by the taxpayer-funded teachers and eat the taxpayer-funded breakfast and lunch and maybe a snack. But at the end of the day, when I get on the taxpayer-funded bus and go home, 
I don't have any way to get internet access to do my homework, so I can't go. Okay, not a problem. Not a problem. We got you covered. We're going to stick our fingers even deeper in the taxpayers' pockets, and we're going to build libraries with internet access and computers for you to use. So now, I'm supposed to swallow the fact that you took money out of my pocket to build a school, took money out to pay for the teachers, took money out to pay for the buses, took money out to pay for the breakfast, the lunch, the snack, took money out to pay for the library so you can get internet access after school. And now you're going to tell me that we don't have enough programs in jail for these people to improve their lot in life? You are the one that chose not to take advantage of the taxpayer-funded school, the taxpayer-funded teachers, the taxpayer-funded free or reduced price breakfast, lunch, and a snack, the taxpayer-funded bus drivers and buses to get you to and from, and the library, and now you want me to spend money for the same darn thing in jail? Not just no, but hell no. At what point does personal responsibility and accountability start to rear its ugly head? At what point? In the words of <laughs> Joe Biden, come on, man. Really? <sighs> For the life of me, I will never understand how we continue to fall for the same crap over and over and over again. You're right, Marty. <sighs> over and over again. And yet, these folks will have you believe that it's unconscionable, it's unconstitutional, it's a moral failing for us to even consider housing juveniles at Angola. Now, we have yet to see all the specifics involved in the plan for housing these juveniles there. I am willing to give the Department of Corrections the benefit of the doubt that there is no way, if you have kids in the room, cover their ears in three, two, one, there's no way in hell they're going to put juveniles in the juvenile population, in the, in the general population at Angola. Really, y'all? Really? If that's what you are thinking, that pretty much should tell you everything you need to know. Who in their right mind would open up their agency and the entire state of Louisiana to civil actions out the wazoo by putting juveniles in with the general population at Angola? Really? And the fact of the matter is, at some point, and we're well past it, mind you, but at some point, we need to send a message, y'all. We need to send a message. You realize we have 14, 15-year-olds engaging in carjacking 78-year-old women, dragging them for blocks at the point where her arm is ripped off her body and she bleeds out in the street. You got a choice. You can send that individual to Angola and let him see where he's heading, or you can sit around and wait until they prove to us that Angola is where they belong. Of course, you do understand the old adage, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. And as anybody with any sense whatsoever knows, it's always more costly when you pay later as opposed to paying now. Just saying. Just saying. Bottom of the hour break. 
<laughs> the granola state. Take out the fruits and the flakes, and all you got left are the nuts. We'll talk about that when we continue today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com At the Team Automotive Group, we're offering you the team guarantee on new and used vehicles. Included with every new vehicle is a lifetime limited powertrain warranty. And now, get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Get the team guarantee at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Hi, I'm Katie, Operation Manager here at Old School Barbecue. We're excited about all of the changes here at Old School, and we'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy some delicious barbecue at Old School Prices. We feature brisket, chicken, ribs, sausage, and the Boss Hog Pulled Pork Sandwich voted best deal in town. We also have live music Friday and Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. 10655 Corsi Boulevard. We can't wait to see you. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Caught spiders. <laughs> Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, it is, it is painful as an American and someone who deeply loves this country and understands the principles that this country was founded upon. It is increasingly hard to watch how inefficient government has become. I guess maybe it's just human nature that when individuals are put in a position where all they do is do stuff with other people's money, it's just a matter of time before inefficiency sets in. We all know, and th this is no earth-shaking revelation to you and yours, we all know that you know much better how to spend your own money than the government does. In recent memory, <laughs> liberals slash progressives and those on the left have been ramping up 
their efforts to shove down our throats renewable energy. As a matter of fact, just this week, the state of California, speaking of granola, the state of California and, by the way, 11 other states are expected to soon follow suit, banned the sale and registration of internal combustion engine vehicles by the year 2035. So in 13 years in California, it will be illegal for you to drive a vehicle that's not electric powered. <laughs> After coming out this week and making this pronouncement, two days later, folks in California find out, whoop, we're coming on a flex alert. That's where the power companies in the state of California are telling residents, if you don't want rolling blackouts between the hours of four in the evening at nine o'clock at night, don't use your washer and dryer, don't use your dishwasher, turn off all unnecessary lights, and don't charge your electric vehicle. <laughs> now let me get this straight. <laughs> you are going to force people to buy an electric vehicle, but it's painfully obvious you don't have the infrastructure to support it. Now, right now, it's estimated only 1.1 million electric vehicles are in use in California. Just imagine adding tens of millions more electric vehicles to the existing grid. How do you think that's going to work out? And lest you forget, in time, it's not going to be just vehicles. We're talking lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, chainsaws, anything with a gas motor on it, you got to go electric. So in addition to all these millions and millions and millions of more electric vehicles, now you have to add all the lawn service folks, all the folks at home, do you really think wind and solar is going to provide enough electricity for this? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You know, you would have to think if these folks were truly sincere about saving the planet, they would have thought this out past this point. It is estimated that California will have to upgrade its electric grid to the tune of 30 percent to make this happen. Do you have any idea how much power these folks use and what a 30 percent upgrade to the electricity grid is going to cost those who use electricity? <laughs> but that's okay. They're not paying for it. You're paying for it. That's the way that goes. Now, <sighs> I started this segment saying how painful it is to watch how inefficient government at all levels, has become in this country. Here is yet another crystal clear example that the government simply either does not possess the ability to or is totally unwilling to become more, more efficient. Remember 
when all these stimulus checks were being just thrown around the country. And conservatives argued that if you do this, you're going to usher in inflation. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. I'm telling you, if you do this, it's going to usher in inflation. No, it's not. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. So what happened? They did it anyway. And what happened? The highest inflation in 42 years. Well, now we find out, speaking of government being inefficient, now we find out that at least $1.3 billion, billion with the B, as in bugs, $1.3 billion at least <laughs> was sent to more than 1.1 million inmates in prison. Oh, but it gets better. It gets better, y'all. Speaking of inefficiency, of the 1.1 million inmates in prison that received a stimulus check, 163,000 of them are serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. You heard me right. <laughs> I guess now we know why the IRS wants another 87,000 agents to get your money. 1.1 million inmates got a stimulus check 163,000 of them are serving life without the possibility of parole and of course when called on the carpet about this recently they also asked the head of the IRS so how many of these inmates that are on death row Got a stimulus check. Well, I, I, I don't have that information. <laughs> See, what had happened was, there you go, Marty. There you go. 1.3 billion of your dollars went to folks sitting in prison. 1.1 million of them. Now, conventional wisdom would say when they're printing up these checks or making the direct deposit conventional wisdom would say nobody's bells whistles flashing lights alarms nobody's hair on the back of their neck stood up when they realized wait a minute this over a million addresses that are penal institutions. Nobody thought anything was out of the ordinary with all these checks going to San Quentin, all these checks going to Rikers Island, all these checks going to Angola State Penitentiary, all these checks going to Pelican Bay. That never raised an eyebrow at the IRS? <sighs> Y'all, 1.3 billion of your tax dollars in the form of stimulus payments to inmates in prison. It's also estimated that 80 billion of your tax dollars in stimulus payments were also paid to businesses that don't exist. So 80 billion to businesses that don't exist 
1.3 billion to inmates, 163,000 of whom are serving life without the possibility of parole. How many billion to Ukraine? But we can forgive billions in student loan debt. Y'all, fiscally, this cannot end well. This cannot end well. Final break of today's show. We'll get her done, come back, put that big old pretty bow on this puppy, and wrap up. Today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontis.com. Sometimes life is wonderful. And sometimes it's not. Cherish the good. But always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private Healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Welcome back to the final segment of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, um, as an old guy, I understand full well that societies typically go through different cycles. There are things that we do that we didn't used to do. There are things that we wouldn't do before. 
that we now do because we go through these ever-changing cycles. One of the things, however, that is so very disheartening to watch and to stomach is how individuals in government, particularly the federal government, apparently have no problem whatsoever lying to you to your face. I mean instances where they have to know that what they're saying makes no sense at all and is at the very least borderline a lie and worst case scenario an outright lie. How we have arrived at a point where individuals in government are comfortable lying to you straight to your face is troublesome. For example, recently, the spokesperson for the office that is regarded as the leader of the free world, Corinne Jean-Pierre, I guess you can get away with this if you are black, female, gay, and an immigrant. If you cover all the diversity, equity, and inclusion bases, you can pretty much lie to people as though they are the biggest freaking idiots on the planet. This woman, when pressed this week by, for my money, the only real reporter in the entire White House press corps, Peter Ducey pressed her on, is it hypocritical for a professional tennis player not to be allowed to fly into the country because he's unvaccinated to take part in a tennis tournament, and yet we let millions of people walk across the border into our country, don't test them for COVID, and then ship them out all across the country. This woman with a straight face said to Peter Ducey and the rest of America, well, it's not like they're walking across the border into this country. Excuse me? <laughs> we have seen, well, apparently everyone other than Corinne Jean-Pierre We've seen literally tons of video of individuals walking, running, crawling, swimming across our southern border. It's estimated anywhere from four to five million have entered this country illegally. And this woman with a straight face said to America, well, it's, it's not like they're just walking across the border. In other words, are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? We sit here and watch the video. Streams of people walking across the border and setting up shop. And this woman would have the unmitigated gall to look me in my face and say, it's, that's just not happening. They're not just walking across the border. Now, at some point, you have to ask yourself if you are a reasonably halfway intelligent person. You have to ask yourself, if they will lie to me to my face about something this obvious what in God's name are they also lying to me about you see it if you look anywhere other than ABC NBC C BS CNN LOL or MSLSD if you look anywhere other than there you see the video you see it. Border Patrol agents sitting there scratching their heads saying, 
well, what border is this woman talking about? They're walking across every freaking day. But are you going to believe the video <laughs> or her? You know, this is going to sound strange. But I miss the days of Peppermint Patty. What, what, what was her real name, Marty? Uh, the woman that was White House spokesperson before Corrine Jean-Pierre. Jen Psaki. Jen Psaki. I almost miss the days. At least she was halfway good at lying to me. She was halfway good at lying to me. This clown that we've got in here now for the most basic of things can't answer a question without doing this. Um, um, and then she'll read the answer. Of course now, <laughs> now that I think about it in retrospect, what's the old adage, and I'm going to clean it up for those of you at home that have children in the room, stuff rolls downhill. You know what I want to say instead of stuff, right? But it's a family show, so I have to say stuff rolls downhill. So it only stands to reason that since this is what we've been getting from the guy at the very top, it only stands to reason it's what we would get from the people that are just below him or below her in the case of Kamala Harris. <laughs> is this what y'all voted for? And yet, after all this, tonight, the leader of the free world, and I know y'all gonna watch, chuckle, chuckle, is going to address the nation and tell us in no uncertain terms how ugly America is and how all the shortcomings are due to the MAGA Republicans, the extremists in the country. <laughs> if you believe that, my dear friend and floor producer extraordinaire Marty and I have a beachfront, mountaintop, seaside chalet with a brothel in the backyard in Bruley, Louisiana, that will let you buy real cheap. <sighs> Who would have ever thought? in the land of the free and the home of the brave. My time's up, y'all, and I got to go. But this day, just like any other, maybe more so than most, I give it to you. You know what? You're right. America, we're not perfect. But for this old boy's money, it's the best there is, and God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do, too. Then again, <laughs> there ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you soon. God bless.